This is Turn-Based Genshin. See you in the next video. Make sure to use the link in the description for a shot at entering the beta with me. Okay, there is a long version, but let's get the similarities out of the way first. Star Isle has a trailblaze level to match adventure ranks and unlock more features and parts of the story. Characters can have one of seven elements and can equip a weapon and artifacts for further stats. The characters come in four and five star rarities and you get them from banners starring one focus five star and three focus four stars each, accompanied by a matching weapons banner. I could go on, but you get the picture. If you play Genshin, you'll understand the gameplay loop of Star Isle very quickly, but there are some fundamental differences that make it its own thing. First off, the weapons. They're called light cones, and instead of being divided between weapon types, they're split between parts, which are the classes of this game. There are seven fairly diverse ones that separate the typical attacker, tank, and support roles. For example, there's a division between AoE and single target damage dealers, as well as healers, buffers, and debuffers. This is a layer on top of the elements, which adds further complexity to team building. All characters, including four stars, have signature cones, and while some of the latter are available as Story or Trailblazer awards, most signature cards are pretty tough to get. On the plus side of light cones, not being weapons, this means Hoyoverse can create characters that use whatever weapons they can think of, and mixing and matching light cones becomes a lot more flexible as well. Artifacts are next. Here they're called relics and come in sets of 6 instead of 5 and have a lower max level to compensate, but they still have the randomized stats we all know and hate. The random stats are even worse here since numbers are everything in turn-based games compared to Genshin, where you can at least play around bad stats with clever positioning or cheese strats. Talents are here as traces, which are arranged more like a skill tree. Daily commissions are also here, although there are only three per day instead of four. There's a daily mission system based on Honkai Impact on top of that which gives further rewards for a few mostly simple tasks. The most difficult is spending 150 Trailblaze power a day, this game's version of Resin. So yes, Resin is also back, albeit more generous. You start with 180 points and they regenerate once every six minutes, which swaps the eight and six from Genshin system. Since individual battles are quicker here, they're easier to burn through than in Genshin, especially since you can chain six cocoon battles, the leyline equivalent, in order to spend 60 power at once, which also expedites matters, but the resin deficiency problem doesn't vanish because of that, as leveling up characters and equipment is just as expensive as it is in Genshin. You also can't loop other types of resin sinks like their equivalent of artifact domains. I hope for those you could just spend multiples of Trailblaze power to multiply the number of rewards by the same amount, but we'll have to see. Weird that Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links is my go-to metric for convenient ways to farm materials. On the plus side, almost all of the 4 stars can be unlocked freely so far. March and Dunhung join during the tutorial, Asta comes from the forced gacha tutorial, like Noel, her turn and Natasha the healer are unlocked via story progression, Serval is unlocked after the third floor of the Spiral Abyss equivalent like Shangling, Su Shang, Arlan and Herc are earned via Simulated Universe and the Fight Club, March, Dunhung, Herta, Natasha and I think Serval's light cones can also be unlocked, but the rest are locked behind the gacha, so I hope those others can be made unlockable for free too. Speaking of, I just wanted to give a shout out to Fight Club for being genuinely fun. The characters you use are all predefined trial ones, so there's no pressure to grind to be able to complete it, and each round is more of a challenge to see how well you understand the game's mechanics, with points given for exploiting certain ones like weakness breaks and follow-up attacks. Speaking of the gameplay, while I agree that it's very simple on the surface, I do like the minimal approach, and there are intricacies to it, like the mechanics I mentioned before. I would like the ability to use items during battle though, that would make the mandatory support role on the team in endgame content more flexible. Another thing Star Wars does better than Genshin is streamlining a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. In Genshin, almost everything is diegetic, but that's not so here. You don't need to visit anyone to turn in daily missions for expeditions, for instance. You can just claim the rewards via a menu. I didn't encounter any instances of missions being locked off until you completed others either, but that could change in the full game and the coming of more side quests. Star Rail is missing some quality of life features from Genshin though. The one I miss most is the ability to preview ascension materials ahead of time. At the moment you can only view them for characters or items at max level, and only the materials needed for the next rank up. I would also like to see the VAs for each character, but since some of the cast is still temporary, I get why that feature wasn't included here. Another plus is the storytelling. The main story is already really interesting. Establishing a fixed secondary cast allows for more banter than just the Traveler and Paimon in Genshin, and I quite like the MC's dynamic with March and Dunhung. The prologue is just as crazy as Genshin's opening, and I really want to see where things go. I've already made a video about the Trailblazers themselves, but suffice it to say that they're my favourite character so far, and I really like how Hoyovers wrote their silent protagonists this time, and want them to take the concept further. The narrative is linear so far, but I've seen some multiple choice endings for some side quests, and want to see where they go in the future too. The world is also fascinating. Think Tivart, but expanded to a galactic scale. There are six 
16 different gods this time around, representing far more abstract concepts, each with different factions representing or even defying certain aspects of their nature. The world design is also fantastic, with a lot of attention to detail, clear to see, and a lot of genuinely hilarious interactions. I've already uploaded a video of some trash can examples, and that isn't even half of them. The voice cast is also stunning. Everyone sounds great, and Hoyerverse fixed some lines that didn't make sense in the first beta 2, like Himiko's ultimate line. Humans never conceal their desire to control the heavens. So why would I? Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens. And I am no exception. I know a lot of weebs are in the subs not dubs camp, but I urge you to give the English dub a try. The voice directors in charge of that version did a great job of properly explaining the context of each scene to the actors, as the intonation of their words are all perfect, with all the emphasis placed in all the right places. Besides, the original language for all of this is Chinese anyway, so the subs not dubs thing doesn't even make sense. One thing I noticed pretty late is that everyone has separate, shorter voice lines when playing the game fast forwarded too, which is another excellent touch. All in all, I really like what I played here. Make no mistake, there are problems, and most of them are the same problems from Genshin. There's an insane amount of grinding needed to accomplish anything, and most materials and useful equipment are locked behind lucky RNG, but I also appreciate the streamlining of features as well as the gameplay and story we've seen so far. The mysteries aren't as deep as Genshin so far, but there's still a lot to talk about here, as you'll have noticed from how I've already made so many theory videos over just a week with the beta being out, and I'm excited to see where Hoyvers takes things next. Thanks for reaching the end of the video, please let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more Star Rail content. I wasn't kidding about the code earlier either, so check that out if you want to get into the beta 2. There are still slots available. Thank you all again and as always have a great day.